Hello, I'm Stuart Edmonds, Executive Vice President, Mission Research and Advocacy at the Canadian Cancer Society. The Canadian Cancer Society has a rich legacy of fueling discoveries that have improved how we prevent, diagnose, treat, and live with and beyond cancer. Because of these advancements, 63% of Canadians diagnosed with cancer are expected to survive five years or more compared to only 25% in the 1940s. But we know there is much more to do. Today's research will lead to more accurate ways of finding cancers earlier, better and gentler treatments tailored to each individual's uh, unique cancer, and more effective and accessible supports to help people thrive with and beyond cancer. To ensure that the pipeline remains full and with promising new ideas, we are committed to strengthening and expanding research potential and building research capacity across the country, particularly in Atlantic Canada. Because of its aging and rural population, levels of lower income and lack of easy access to medical interventions, Atlantic Canada has the unenviable distinction of having the highest incidence of cancer per 100,000 people in Canada. Investing in research is critical to lessening the burden of cancer on families and creating a better future for Maritimers. By supporting the Excellence in Cancer Research Fund, you will help provide more resources for scientists in Atlantic Canada so they can conduct more critical cancer research contributing to the national cancer research efforts and increasing the number of cancer breakthroughs in the long term. With your support, we can ensure that research changes the future of cancer for all Canadians in all communities. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Seal and I'm the CEO of the Canadian Cancer Society. And on behalf of everyone at the Canadian Cancer Society, I'm extending a huge thank you to you for your invaluable support. We're incredibly excited to be partnering with JD Irving Limited to launch our first ever Atlantic campaign. Thanks to you, we're going to be able to fund progress in cancer research. And nearly one in two Canadians are expected to be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. This affects us all. And Atlantic Canada has the highest incidence of cancer in the whole country, with an estimated 16,000 Maritimers diagnosed every year. So we need to address this together. And that's why the Atlantic Canada Excellence in Cancer Research Fund is such an important initiative. Funds raised through this campaign will support groundbreaking research to better detect, diagnose and treat cancer. It will help ensure that people affected by cancer, including families and caregivers, get the support that they need. Our free and flexible support programs like our Cancer Information Helpline and travel subsidies, wig banks, um, these are all available in Atlantic Canada and will help people with cancer find community connection and build resilience. And your commitment will motivate and inspire other people to be part of this initiative. And um, together, we're going to improve the lives of many people. So thank you again for this partnership and for committing to make such a meaningful difference to people affected by cancer in the Maritimes. Your contribution is going to enhance and sustain these programs that are uniquely able to make a difference in people's lives. Thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. As we all know, cancer is a terrible disease and it affects so many people, our friends, neighbors, colleagues at work, and perhaps most importantly, our family members, such as it has affected our family. But the good news is there have been great strides made in the advancement of research in terms of curing cancer. And that's why today we're so pleased to be able to make this donation that's going to go to Atlantic Canadian Universities where they're going to continue to advance the research. And this, as we all know, this is going to be a great thing for all of us here in Atlantic Canada and across Canada, we hope. And in particularly for our employees who are making this donation. Many men and women who are very proud to work with and do a great job for us across the organization we want to make sure that they share in, in the credit for this donation today. So on behalf of our family, the men and women who we work with, uh, we're very pleased to make this donation and the great work of the doctors, the researchers, and uh, all the folks at, at the Canadian universities, uh, we're very happy to be part of this event today. 
At J.D. Irving, we're proud to offer our help to support cancer research. We're making this important donation on behalf of our employees. The reason is simple. Research is critical and the need is great. Nearly every one of us has been touched by cancer, either personally or by watching someone we love fight this terrible disease. Cancer hits close to home. It has touched my family, it has touched our employees' families, and it has touched our neighbors. Unfortunately, no one is immune. Finding a cure for cancer is something we all hold close to our hearts. Research has taken us a long way and we're proud of our long history of supporting this cause. We continue to donate to cancer research and have been active in the Relay for Life, Run for the Cure, and Convoy for Hope. We want to find a cure and improve outcomes so our employees and their families don't continue to lose people they love. We are proud that the research we are funding will be conducted right here in Atlantic Canada. I have great hope the research will produce results and help those in our region, the rest of Canada and around the world. In one word, I would call her bubbly. Hannah's always happy. No matter what's going on, Hannah's happy. I would describe her as a energetic, and I have to add, I, I feel she's just a beautiful soul. I would say she's my best friend. You know, things kind of unfolded the, the last week of August in 2016. She was losing weight. She wasn't eating a whole lot. She was complaining of some joint pain. We were keeping an eye on her. We were concerned about how she was feeling. We thought maybe it was just a flu or something that was going around. There was a few bloody noses. Um, by the mid-August, she developed a large lump on the side of her nose. This just isn't Hannah. Hannah's such a happy-go-lucky, warm, bubbly, cartwheeling kind of kid. And all of a sudden, she was lethargic and laying on the couch for a couple of days. And um, most of it was chalked up to growing pains. You know, Tammy really on Wednesday said, Something's wrong, this is not Hannah. Can you get her into the, to the doctors? And by the end of that day, we were at the hospital. And I still remember coming off the elevator, coming around the corner and looking at the sign, Pediatric Oncology. And Tammy took a post-it note and she wrote on it, they're talking about IWK and she passed it to me and I read that and my heart sank. And uh, that's when things started to get serious and I started to get concerned. I sat down and Tammy stood beside me and the doctor looked at us and said, well, I'm 95% sure your daughter's got leukemia. And uh, I don't know that anybody's ever ready to hear those words. Um, that was the hardest thing I've ever heard in my life and I was devastated. I was hysterical and uh, I was scared. And all I could think of is that, oh my God, are we gonna lose our little girl? <sighs> well, um, the word cancer, of course, is, um, you know, you associate that with, with dying. Um, so when you hear the words cancer uh, and your nine-year-old daughter, um, it was the worst feeling that a parent could ever experience. Especially when your nine-year-old daughter is, um, you know, she's just so tiny. I'm Hannah Gallant and I am 13, almost 14, and I really enjoy playing hockey and I enjoy art and hanging out with all my friends. 
that's it. <laughs> it's like 90% to 95% for like survival rate. But I remember still being scared, like what if I'm the unlucky one, the odd one that's going to get in the negative spot. So there's always that bit of fear, but I try to keep positive and I looked on the better outcome. The doctor told us that, uh, and she said it so casually, she said, we can, we can cure this. I was a nine-year-old girl going into fourth grade with a bald head and all my friends were like really shocked of it. So my brothers and my dad shaved their head for me and I remember just feeling very happy about it and very not so alone and seeing that my family really cared about me. I thought that was like the least I could do was do it with her if she felt that it didn't look normal or something. At least we all did it too. No child should have to go through that alone and uh, feel out of place for something they can't help. So I figured I'd do all I could to uh, make her feel like she fit in. At the IWK they have a bell that symbolizes you're going to ring it when you are finished treatment and you're back to being healthy. And the bell is always this like big thing that was like, okay, it's in the future, I get to ring this eventually. But it never really realized it was going to actually happen that I was going to ring that bell one day. Walking up to the bell, it was like that big thing that I've been looking forward to, like my whole journey. It was right there in front of me and I was ready to ring it and that was a symbolize of when I was done treatment. I was really excited. I could feel myself like jumping a little. You know, to put a more put it in perspective, there are other kids that we have met along this journey who haven't been as lucky as Hannah and we've lost. And there are other forms of cancer out there that are not curable and they they need the funding to find cures or at least a prognosis that is 90 to 95 percent like it was for Hannah and that's what the ultimate goal is. We don't want other people to have to go through what we went through and even worse you know go through losing a child to cancer. One of the toughest conversations I had was with, with a doctor and the doctor told me something that to this day I still recall. He said, Corey, we'd be having a much different conversation if this was 20 years ago. And it was at that point that I realized, oh my goodness, you know, and how far we've come with research and all of the doctors and all the scientists and all the wonderful work that they do, you know, how lucky we are to be able to enjoy our success in this terrible, terrible battle. But we're so blessed today that uh, thanks to all the, all of the work and all the money that's been donated, all the research that's been done, you know, we today have our little girl with us because of all that. And we're so thankful for that.